Hello and welcome to this session. Thank you everyone for being here. My name is Abdullah. I am VCDX270. And today we're here to talk about one of the most important stages in preparing for your defense, the design scenario. Why would I call it the last mile? Because it's actually the last portion of your defense that you're going to do, which, you're going, which is going to give you the push to either success or fail. So what's on for today? We're going to talk about what is the design scenario, then a little bit of defense preparation, then we're going to talk on how I prepared for it, and if we still have enough time, I'm going to show you a slide from my actual preparation when I was preparing for my uh, defense in one of the mocks. So what is the uh, VCDX design scenario about? So you, are, a joke could be a guy walks into a room, but you're actually the guy walking into a room. You have three panelists, but the panelists, they are not actually playing as panelists. So they are not peers, they are customers. They are playing a role. So one of them could be a CEO, one of them could be a CFO, a CMO. I don't know, but they are role playing. They give you a whiteboard and you have a couple of markers to draw and you should be using them. And you have a period of 45 minutes to accomplish a logical design based on VMware's um, cycle of designing, which, is, which, co which covers the um, uh, assess, design, deploy phases, but eventually we're not reaching the deploy. We're not going to the physical design. We're only doing uh, business stuff, and then we're going to draw, to draw a couple of diagrams to go and um, display our design decisions. What you should know in that room that you should not own the room or kind of um, be the only one who speaks. It's a conversation. You're asking questions. They're giving you back answers. And to do that, you would need a couple of skills before the defense, in the defense, and post the, um, and while prepared and while waiting for the uh, actual uh, uh, room entrance. I would call this the power, right? So the P stands for present. You need to be capable of presenting a design. You need to be capable of sitting in a room with people looking at you and asking you questions without having any kind of uh, fear. And you can gain that by practicing with a lot of people. It doesn't have to be technical people. It doesn't have to be people who know what you're actually doing. You just need to get the flow on going uh, in terms of speech and conducting a, uh, a successful conversation. The next thing would be your whiteboarding skills. So what I used to do, because I do travel a lot, I hung a whiteboard back at home, but I used to have like this small mini whiteboard that I carry on while traveling. Why would I do that? Because every time I see a diagram that is of interest, that has to do with the technology that I do, I just go and practice drawing, drawing it. In that room, you do not have the time to think a lot. So you need your hand to be uh, uh, pretty quick at drawing diagrams. And the only way to do that is to practice, practice, practice. And having a whiteboard, whiteboard as a, a companion, it's very important. The last thing that I would really, really recommend is to abstract yourself while doing a presentation or while doing a design scenario. And by abstraction, I mean, and this is a very important skill, is that in that room, you're not there as a person. You're there as an architect. You're there as a person who's trying to solve a problem. So when the panelists or when the people talking to you are addressing you with something, don't take it personal. Think of it. Think of the impact of that question, of, of that reply on the design scenario. Don't think that the question or the word that they are saying is something to provoke you. And at a personal level, this is very dangerous. You need to be very abstract about this. This is not you. This is only the architect role that is meant to be speaking at that point in time. Now, moving on. How do you actually prepare? From a, I won't say a technical point of view, because you're already there, right? You passed your VCIX, 
you did the defense, now you're in the design scenario. When you walk into the room for a customers and you want to conduct a successful design session, you need to go back to the basics. You need to think about the features. You don't know, you don't want that mass or complex architectural diagrams or, or, or thoughts. You need to go back to the basics. What does this product do? And what features does it have? And how does those features uh, can be of aid while I'm presenting so that I can solve the problem? To do that, you would go from an NV perspective, you would go back to the blueprint, the VCP blueprint, because it has the most basic features on how to do it and why to do it. And then you'd go to the sales uh, documents that are about just pure features. You need to have those in mind all the time. And the next thing that you would do is look at product use cases. You need to have a mindset of what does NSX and its portfolio of features do? Some of the times you already have the use cases from projects that you have done, but most of the times you will need to look at what other people have done, what other people have <clears throat> architected, or what customers are actually doing. Moving on with this specific point, you need to look at VMware's ecosystem. So it is not just what VMware direct customers are doing, it's about VMware partners as well. You know NSX integrates with a lot of products. You would go there as well, see their use cases, see how they are using NSX to, sol to solve different and uh, I would say simple and complex pro problems at the same time. This is something that you most probably hear and know and will hear again, the blueprint. The VCDX has a very definitive blueprint with a lot of items. To prepare for the VCDX from day one until you finish, you need to be able to think about the blueprint all of the time. So if you go to the VCDX workshop or if you hear anyone talking about the VCDX from a process perspective, they will also emphasize and mention the blueprint all the time. So you need to read the blueprint, you need to memorize the blueprint, eat the blueprint, you need to digest the blueprint, you need to dream about the blueprint until finally you become one with the blueprint. I really, I really I'm, I'm not kidding about this. The good way of doing this is that when you do the defense, the first stage, you walk out of the room, right? They give you a 10 minutes break to think about whatever you want to think about. Don't think about anything. Think about the blueprint. Structure your mind to go back to the basics because you're going back into that room with a new mindset. You're building something, and to build that something, you need the structure. And the structure is the blueprint. So, while conducting the conversation with the panelists or with the customers, I would say it's more of a doctor and patient relationship. So if you go to a doctor and they ask you, what's wrong? You, most probably you're going to give them some generic reason and then they are going to ask you more questions so that they can derive the answer out, right? This is, this is, and this is the same kind of conversa conversation. You're asking them a question, you're trying to solve a problem, and the, their answers are going to be key for you to be able to conduct a successful design. Now, as I said before, you're not required to do a fully-fledged design. You're paving the way for a roadmap, right? So most of the times, they might ask you questions that require a session on its own. What you can do is, in a smart way, tell them that we're building a roadmap, we're putting on the main things that we need to do, and then we can move on to a specific point at a later point in time. This is what we usually do in meetings, right? So we don't talk about anything in 45 minutes. We build on something, and then we move on with it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't consider any question as stupid, or I should ask, or should not ask. You shouldn't be stopping, uh, you, shouldn't, you should not stop talking during the session. You should always be talking. Whether you're asking questions, whether you're explaining about something, you should always ask. Um, I would say, while writing on the whiteboard, if you don't have anything to say, 
just talk about the past experience with the product itself. You're in a, you're in a room with customers explaining how this product and its features are there to help you with a, a successful journey towards a, a, cert, a certain endeavor, right? So when you're telling them stories from your experience, it is considered something good. And this is something that the panel would be actually looking at. I don't know in terms of scoring, but I would say that to conduct a successful meeting end to end, you shouldn't be stopping to talk at any point in time. Try to confirm your answers and thoughts. So if one of the panelists asks you a question because of something that they do not know about, when you finish, try to, see, try to think that, OK, I want to confirm that this point is OK, and I need to move on, right? Uh, prepare to be asked customer questions. Don't think about them as panelists. So they might ask you, what is HA? They might ask you, what is ECMP? They might ask you, uh, what, is, what is dynamic routing, for all I know, right? So you need to be prepared to, ask these simple, to answer for these simple questions to move on. How I did it? So from a, again, you need to structure your thoughts. The process of doing a successful design is about the capability of doing it again, again, and again, and again in an iterative manner where you should be able to start and finish every time you follow that process. When you go into that room and you find the whiteboard, if you start drawing or writing on the whiteboard without a proper structure, you're going to lose it. You're, not, you're, not go you're going to lose focus, right? So the way I do it is I structured the whiteboard into three sections. The first section is about conceptual design, where I take requirements, and then I do the um, assumptions, risks, and, and I fill in these uh, major business requirements, and I have a small section for additional uh, thoughts. When you move on with this, and once you collect all of these, you should be able to start writing some design decisions. And this is very important. This is even more important than starting with drawing your lo logical designs. Now, again, this is something that I added just to, uh, uh, again, keep focus on the blueprint, right? So these are the items that are found in the blueprint, OK, from a, from a, from a topic perspective. And once you're done with the design decisions, you put them, right? Each design decision has an effect either on availability, manageability, recoverability, or security, right? So each design decision has a, a certain trait. While doing the design decisions, make sure that you refer back to the requirements. You're, you're there to solve a business problem. So once you lock on a design decision, make sure that the panelists hear you. I mean, you don't have to write it, but make sure that they hear you, okay? I took this design decision to solve problem one. I took this design decision to solve problem two. Once you have the design decisions, you should be able to start drawing small diagrams about each design decision. The way I think of it, don't draw just a big diagram, okay, and build on it. Why? Because during the design scenario, one of the panelists might change their mind. They might give you a new input. And this input will force you to go again through the same process to do the, the same measurement. Now, if you have a big diagram and you want to do a quick change on it, it might uh, uh, disrupt everything. While if you have small diagrams, you can just remove that small diagram and move on. Does that make, this make sense? All right. So this is one of my uh, design mocks. It was about a service provider. I started with the business requirements, the conceptual design. I moved into some design decisions, and I ended up with a couple of logical uh, diagrams. The logical diagrams do not have to be very neat and sleek and chic, as they say, but they need to address the design decision which you, uh, which you took. And with that, I'd be done with this small session. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I hope this is very helpful for you. Yes. No questions?